All right, everybody, welcome to the live stream. We've got a lot of things to go over, so let's just jump right in. So first, before we talk about what's going to happen with the uh, Fed uh, rate cuts and how that's going to lead into, I think, a pretty massive bull run. And the reason for that is because $6 trillion has to find a home is uh, I need to do a little PSA before we get started, which is this. If you own Storm X, there is a link in the description to the official Storm X uh, Twitter or X account. And apparently uh, they are moving over to a, to a version two from V1 after Ethereum's proof of, uh, when they went from proof of uh, work to proof of stake. It's very simple. I did it today, but you have to do that today before 2359 UTC time or else essentially your tokens are lost. So uh, you can correct me in the comment section. That's what I've read so far. But again, there's a link in the description. If you own StormX and it's on any type of, uh, any type of uh, wallet that you own, make sure you do that today. Because if not, I think everything goes away. All right. So that takes care of the PSA. Let's talk about the good stuff. And the good stuff is Fed rate hikes. Now, I know that uh, we've been expecting those. And in actuality, we actually talked about that in detail today at, uh, on NFA Live. It was on Ben's channel uh, this time. And we talked about the, the macro effects and what's happening. And we're all pretty much, a lot of people are saying that the Fed is going to cut rates and it's going to happen relatively soon. And this is why it's so big and why it's just, the timing is impeccable. Here's what we got. So as a Federal Reserve's policy pivot draws into view, investors face a $6 trillion question, which is where to deploy this record amount of cash if the beefy interest rate returns drawing people there evaporate. Because, you know, like right now, the 10-year and, and, and three-month, the 10- and two-year, I mean, it's, it's pretty uh, attractive. I've, I've actually never seen it this high, but that's what you have when, uh, when the rates are so extremely high. I mean, it's like, uh, it's like the safest thing that you can do. Earning short-term rates, the attraction of 5% cash is considerable, and raises a high bar for other assets to perform in an uncertain economic environment. But once the Fed cut comes into view, which I got to tell you, everybody's talking about it right now, and it seems like it's actually going to happen in 2024, that money will move rapidly out of the maturity curve and into riskier assets. Let me say it again. When the Fed cut comes, the money will move rapidly out of the maturity curve and into riskier assets. Doubly fast if, as of consensus, those cuts arrive without being forced by recession. I think they're going to do it before with actually had a recession. Again, this is one of those times when we are coming into a presidential election in uh, next year. So they don't want to see a recession. They don't want to hear a talk about recession. So if they can cut rates, so much the better, even if they have to put it off into uh, years later. But uh, if this happens, what I think it is, again, perfect timing. What happens in 2024? A halving. What usually happens after the halving? Pretty big bull run. So I think we're in the right place at the right time. Rates, futures markets are now pricing in more than 100 basis points of cuts next year, starting in May. And the two-year Treasury yield is at its lowest since July. It has slumped 35 basis points this week alone. A recent report by BlackRock. I don't know if you've heard about these people. BlackRock, they're a pretty big deal. Uh, almost 10 trillion assets under management. Kind of jockeying for this nice little Bitcoin ETF uh, position. And I think they might actually get it, but who knows? Notes, BlackRock notes that on average, cash returns are 4.5% in the year following the final Fed rate hike, significantly underperforming a wide array of asset classes. Isn't that convenient? BlackRock, 10 trillion assets under management, is telling all their clients, like, look, you can keep it in, the, in, the, in money markets, you can keep it in, in these rates, but what's going to happen over the long term is that once they start to cut and the Fed pivots, you're only going to get returns of 4.5%. And we can find you other things which can give you a higher percentage. And we're not telling you the whole, uh, your whole portfolio, but there's this thing. It's called Bitcoin. And we just had an ETF. So maybe you want to think about 2 to 3%. Then we move into like traditional equities and we do some other stuff in real estate, whatever else it is. But again, uh, if BlackRock puts it out, I think it's a pretty good timing at the right place at the right time. And then lastly... Are we going to make cash trash again? Because right, there's a lot of dry powder. And this is the part where it brings it all together. The latest figures tracked by ICI, Global Funds Industry Body, shows that total money market fund assets stood at a record high of $5.76 trillion just a week ago, November 21st. $2.24 trillion is in retail investor funds and $3.52 is in institutional funds. What does that mean? It means if you got money stuck in there, these different managers, these institutional investors, these hedge funds, they don't get paid to have you just sit around with, with cash in these little uh, tiny accounts. They get paid to allocate those funds into something. And where's that going to go? Well, probably into something a little bit more risky. And that could be 
Bitcoin and digital assets. But uh, we'll see if it actually plays out the way that uh, we hope it all does. And uh, I got to tell you, right place, right time. And if we take a look at uh, the Fed cutting rates, this is the uh, CME group, the FOMC tool. And as far as uh, where we are right now, as far as the uh, Fed terminal funds rate, we're looking at we're at 525 to 550. 13th of December, which is the next meeting coming up, 96% say they're going to stay and four, roughly 4% think, eh, they might, might raise it. But then as we move into January, they're thinking to cut potentially in January, but only like 6%. And then in March, they're thinking, yeah, maybe 44%, 50% they could say the same. 1st of May, 20 of June, and then 31st of July, you get the point. The point is that people are expecting Fed cuts, and we'll see if it actually all comes down. Again, uh, you can check out the video where we talked about uh, the macro events in a little bit more detail, and if a live, links in the description. So if we're talking about Bitcoin and we're talking about these things, and you know, like even BlackRock says, maybe riskier assets might be a little bit better, um, I'm going to try to say that Bitcoin's the safest part, but what if you want to go a little bit riskier? Well, it's up to you because I'm not a financial advisor, nor am I your dad. But check this out. Now, I'm kind of getting vibes of 2021. I got to tell you, things are heating up pretty quickly. Crypto sponsorships. University of Miami strikes a deal with Helium Mobile. I'm not a big, this is one of the rare times I'm going to talk about a project that I don't own. Now, Helium is built on Solana. So I own Solana, so I guess I can get away with this. But uh, this is a pretty good in, uh, article about where things are going and probably a riskier asset. So Helium Network named the official wireless sponsor of University of Miami, company and school announced on Wednesday. So this isn't one of those things where it's like, oh, we're partners, you know, but it's less like, oh, we just sold them in the University of Miami. But no, it looks like they're actually partnering up and they're gonna be part of the student body and giving out these deals. So Helium Mobile will host promotions and fan experience at Miami Hurricanes home across sports, including as yet unannounced deals for each of these students. And this is the interesting part about Helium. If you don't know what it is, I barely know what it is. This kind of lays it out. In August, Helium Mobile launched a $5 per month unlimited phone plan in Miami. That's pretty good. Five bucks a month, unlimited, using its network of hotspots. It's operated by users who earn crypto tokens, Helium, for participating in the network. Helium Mobile's network is also supported by T-Mobile, nationwide 5G coverage, which is tapped when users aren't within range of a hotspot. So I was looking at this, I'm like, that's a that's a pretty good. And it looks like uh, they've got a good uh, a, a product on their on their hands. And again, it's uh, they actually moved over to Solana uh, just, uh, I wanna say six or seven months ago, correct me in the comments section. And we take a look at the price itself with Helium. Uh, over the last 90 days, it went from a buck 40 to almost three dollars so that's a double in a very short amount of time so if you're holding helium congratulations didn't see that coming but that's why the crypto market moves so so fast and then on top of that if we're going to talk about more uh, riskier plays gaming this is a, a piece by decrypt esports giant team liquid reveals a collab with nft game alluvium now alluvium if you're not familiar with we've actually had uh, the co-founders uh, both the warwicks on and uh, it's doing pretty good as far as uh, price appreciation in the game itself. It's already listed on uh, uh, not Square Onyx, uh, not Helium, one of the big uh, 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 gaming platforms. And uh, it's breaking in, it's doing pretty well as, as traditional gamers are actually playing it. So now we've got this one, Team Liquid reveals the collab. And the big thing that I'm, I, I want to take away from this is that there's a lot of, there's like a, a there's like a dichotomy between Web3 gamers and Web2 gamers. And Web3 gamers are like, it's great, NFTs, you can know all this stuff. And there's the Web2 gamers of like, we hate your guts and this is just a cash grab. Don't, I hate the word NFT. And now it seems like we're coming together because um, miraculously, somebody made a game that's fun. Go, you know, go figure. So this is what we got. This was uh, uh, from Liquid Team. They said, we'll be limit testing and advising them on the PVP aspect of their game. We've been incredibly impressed with the quality of the game from what we've seen so far. Team Liquid members like League of Legends player Broxa, sure. Midbeast among those from the esports organization Checking Out Alluvium, according to the CEO. And Team Liquid, again, this is an this is an esports organization. They're a pretty big, I mean, they have a huge following as far as like on, on X, almost a million, like three quarters of a million followers. And apparently they're uh, pretty gigantic in the esports uh, arena. 
Team Liquid raised $35 million in funding last year at a $415, $415 million valuation. Esports. Esports. Uh, and just, just so you know, Alluvium is built on Immutable X, an Ethereum scaling network focused on gaming. I want to say that uh, Mark Cuban uh, bought the Dallas Mavericks. Like he's like was the majority owner for like $325 million or something like that. And these guys got a valuation of $450 million valuation. So don't sleep on esports. Don't sleep on gaming. I think it's the, the next big narrative uh, moving forward. And then, of course, what does this mean for the price action in the last 24 hours? Not much, honestly. And that's just how it goes in crypto. It's actually down 2% in 24 hours. But again, over the 90-day time period, I mean, you saw Louvre go from 42 bucks all the way up to 120 bucks. That's like a, that's a 3x. So not too bad for your Louvre holders. I would be one of those people. But uh, to, to sum this all up, I actually had a friend on the show, Jesus Martinez from Classy Crypto. And that was one of his big plays. His plays, and this is, we did an interview on September 1st. And you can find all these videos on YouTube or you can you know, make it easier yourself and go to Dan Teaches Crypto. But his, his picks were Gala, Ronin, Immutable X, Alluvium, Avalanche, which also did 2X, Polygon, and Myria. And what I did was I invited him back on to talk about what's new and what his new picks are. And we went over like a plethora of different things. First of all, that Alluvium game in his, in his, uh, in his calls, he's saying that's only a 35X. And there are different plays that he's saying at our 50, 75, and 100x. And then also we talked about uh, his, his responsibility for, as he calls it, paper handitis and all the screw-ups that he did in the last bull run. And then he talked about something that I had never heard of before in gaming. And it's like one of the big, I think it's one of the untapped potentials, which are nodes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you listen. This is uh, me and Jesus, and it's an interview. It's about 12 minutes long. And uh, it's pretty good. And then we'll do a little Q&A after that. So let me uh, pull up this information. Should actually have this ready uh, beforehand. Or anybody still like it? Yeah, there we go. Let me pull this in so you actually hear it the right way. So I think what really it comes down to is that in the next bull run, there's going to be a couple of narratives. And uh, of course, one of those is going to be AI. I think the other one could be uh, decentralized exchanges. And the third one I think is going to be a big one is gamification or GameFi. And thankfully, I got somebody in here who lives and breathes it. It's uh, Jesus Martinez. Jesus, welcome back. to this. this is the second time, I think. Yeah, I'm going to be here all day. I'm so excited. <laughs> I've been playing video games since I was four years old. Now I can actually make money off of it. So the world is changing rapidly, my friends. Well, I mean, but it's, it, it only makes sense because it's one of those things that's like, it's like recession proof, not recession proof, but like when we have these four year cycles and, and the typical layer ones and Bitcoin and things like that, things just go up and they crash spectacularly because, you know, at some point some people say, well, I don't really need this. But for gamification, for Web3, I think, you know, as time goes on and the games get better, you need the tokens to play the game. And if there's another, I mean, heaven forbid, another pandemic, people still want to play. What do they got to do? They got to get a token. They got to move from there. Yeah, I mean, the gaming industry overall just keeps growing. It just doesn't feel like going down ever. More people want to get entertained. More people have free time. They got to have some kind of purpose, so they get into gaming. I would say, you know, the problem with gaming in bear markets, it's more so the tokenomic structures on a lot sure. of these tokens. But I would say, yeah, for sure. Like, if it's a good game and people are going to play it, they will need this token no matter what, and it has a use case. Mm -hmm. Versus Layer 1s, it's like, how do I get more APR in this thing and pump and dump it to oblivion? And then I'll get come back the next cycle, maybe. Well, and then it's okay. So it's, it's a good point. And, and what it really comes down to is, is the tokens themselves. And as a reminder, everybody, uh, there's links in the description. You can check out uh, Jesus's uh, channel over on YouTube, uh, blowing up almost uh, 20,000 subs. Then, of course, over on, uh, on X, you've got 116,000 followers. Congratulations. That was a pretty good thing. And then also, this was the one you were on before. Uh, right now, we're coming into December 2023. You were on roughly, you know, two, three months ago, September 1st. While. Yeah, it's been a while. But here was your picks. Gala, Ronin, Amoeba X, Alluvium, Avalanche, Polygon, and Myria. And I took a look at this in September 1st. Going all the way back uh, to that point, here's Gala. You had roughly a penny or so, penny and uh, 0 0.018. And you got 0 0.027. So that's a double right there. And then Ronin, roughly 50 cents, then went all the way up to over a dollar. So again, there's a double. Immutable X, roughly 54 cents. I think he almost tripled this to $1.50.
yes. Alluvium. This is the one that I was in actually as well. $41 all the way up to 115 Avalanche is a layer one and of course it's in the top 20. So not as easy, but it went from nine bucks all the way up to 22. Now we're at 20. That one ran even more. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that weird? But, yeah. but it's because of these, uh, all these different games that are built on it. And then the big one, Myriad, which I had never heard of before, he called this at, I mean, a fractions of a penny. And now here we are at, you know, a penny itself. Yeah. If you go to the max chart, that's almost literally the bottom <laughs> on the Look entire chart. Look at this. You yeah, had a couple months for it. It just kind of stood there. Yeah, see, these are good calls. And this was, you know, back in this day, September 1st, people were like, eh, whatever, doesn't make any much sense, you know, I guess so. But I will say this, all these different tokens that you had, there was a post that you put on. And I think, and, and we'll get into your to your top picks and uh, a big different play, which I uh, have joined you on as far as like nodes yep. and things like that, which was this, this uh, tweet that you put out or this X, this post, where you talk about, that you think that nodes are the big play, short-term profit, but fail to secure long-term bags. And you talk about paper handitis because you were here for the last bull run. So what are you talking about here? And what's the lesson to be taken from this, from someone who's already been in the last bull run? Yeah, so very simply put, last bull market was wonderful me for, for me. Like I went ahead, got into the Axie Infinity craze, made so much money, got into Peg Axie, somehow made it out without losing everything too, and Crazy. just kept rolling it over. But then we had a bit, of a bit of a bear market. And for some reason, I had these really big diamond heads that everybody kept talking about. At some point, those diamond heads started to crack a little bit. I know diamonds are a really tough resource, but for some <laughs> reason, that diamond was not worth nearly as much by the end of the bear cycle. So this time around, I've learned from that. I've decided that maybe at some point you probably need to start taking profits. So I started DCA accumulating throughout the entirety of this bear market. I mean, it's been... Almost two years. This is, is this the longest bear market in history? I, I believe so, right? I believe you're right, yeah. Yeah, very long bear market. My first bear market as well, so isn't that exciting? But um, that gives us a lot of time to DCA. So I've had a ton of time to get into these plays. I've looked into Miria nodes, playable nodes, and all these different places. And I've kind of realized, after the tokens pump, First off, humans are terrible psycho psychologically in the sense that they will either take profit the second something doubles and never get into it again because they think it's just overvalued. Or right. they will go ahead, get into something, it goes up like mad, and they will just decide for some reason, I will never take profit on this thing because it's just going to be worth more and more and more and your greed index continues to increase. If you have no strategy or mindset coming into this to actually take profit, you will not take profit. It goes up, it goes down, sideways, doesn't matter. You will hold that bag to the rest of eternity for some reason. Uh, you know, I've been a victim of that as well. I think a lot of us have, and that's why crypto isn't worth as much as it is. Uh, but this time around, I've decided to do things a little bit different. I have paper handitis. I will 100% say that. I have a system now that has made me pretty good profits so far. We'll see how it goes ahead and carries along. But it's pretty much I allocate you know, a percentage of my portfolio to tokens. And then once the tokens end up going up, I paper hand when it goes like 2 to 5x. And I go ahead and roll over some of those profits into node ecosystems. Why do I do that? Well, for one, it helps fund the actual crypto gaming project. So you're kind of paying homage. But that's not the main reason you're doing that. You're doing it because you want passive income and because you feel like you might get more passive returns. And we all say all the time, you want those active investments to at some point become passive investments so you can finally relax uh, with your life. If you make a million dollars, it doesn't matter if you're throwing it back into the markets and then losing it. If you make a million dollars, you buy properties and real estate and you right. start rolling it over into other things. Okay, that makes sense. And if we think that the crypto gaming market is supposed to grow astronomically over the next decade or so, which a lot of people are saying, bear market or not, you want it to get into these nodes because nodes are going to accrue tokens and coins no matter what. So I can have paper hands all day and then I can also get this passive resource that continues to come over and over and over as I secure this chain. And um, it's just a better strategy overall than just going ahead and YOLOing it and hoping it goes up. I can paper hand all day, take profits, and I will still be making tokens. That's, you know what, that's a pretty good way to look at things. If you think of it like, okay, there's, the, there's a token itself and it's a little bit risky, and then maybe I can get out of that and get into something a little bit more stable as far as an asset. And you've compared the nodes to real estate, which is what my favorite one was for the last bull run when I made the profits and then put it in into short-term rentals, also the sports facility, and then, uh, of course, some, some long-term uh, real estate properties. So I can see that. You know, and then we'll, so we'll talk about, let's, okay, 
let's dig into it. Before we get into the nodes part, which I join you, uh, as a matter of fact, on uh, one of them, uh, let's talk about, first of all, if you're interested about what Asus just said, he does a, he does a daily show. And he breaks it down Monday through Friday, crypto gaming news, brief hot takes, crypto gaming news, gaming leaders, and then more gaming news on Friday. Lots but of gaming news. <laughs> lots of gaming news. But a lot of those things are mixed in here. Here was one of your, one of your uh, recent videos where you kind of labeled everything out. And uh, I will link this video in the description. You can check out Asus's top plays. This has been updated from the one that he did over here. But talk to us real quick about these. And of course, you don't want to tell everything, but... How do you pick these? How do you know which ones are doing pretty well? And, and I see there's a uh, uh, Weibo looks like it's at 100x. Just talk to us real quick about those. <laughs> yeah, you got a note of those, right? Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. so um, pretty much here's the TLDR of it all. Uh, infrastructure, gaming studios, incredibly bullish. Utility coins, uh, specific just single games. I'm a little bit bearish on long term only because if you make a single mistake on a game token, Go straight to the gulag. It goes straight to zero. No recovery from there. Axie okay. Infinity is a great use case of this one. SLP had its gulag moment, never came back. So I think this time around, you know, governance coins, gaming studios are going to do incredibly well. Uh, obviously, you know, some of the ones at the 25x, 10x already have astronomical valuations. And if right. we're trying to see the overall industry hit like a hundred billion dollars by the end of this run, it's at 15 billion dollars right now. I think that's completely reasonable with how low of a market cap all these have been ignored to. Uh, then, yeah, I mean, this can happen for sure. Uh, a couple of these coins are migrating into another. Uh, you know, there's some of these plays that are using governance and they're on top of specific gaming studios, and that's why I rated them higher. For example, you know, Wag Me Games is going mm -hmm. ahead and doing a mobile game, which I love mobile, yeah. and they're also on top of Immutable X with their Immutable X Passport, which I'm super bullish on Immutable X. I mean, they've kind of been the grandfather of the crypto gaming industry. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm super bullish on that. I think the valuations for a lot of these coins, if you looked at the last bull cycle, you'd be laughing right now. Because <laughs> back then, meme coins were going to billions of dollars. That's Even right. if an actual gaming studio is not worth a billion dollars, here's the thing. In crypto, liquidity is a big narrative that no one talks about. Just because something is worth a billion doesn't mean it's worth a billion liquid. So the valuations for a lot of these crypto coins, even if they're worth $40 million, they're not actually worth 40 million dollars they're probably worth somewhere around maybe like four to ten million dollars liquid ish if you're ish. really like yeah very if ish it's yeah if it's there. <laughs> so, um so i would say like a billion dollar valuation is really only like a hundred million maybe 400 million and that's entirely reasonable considering where gaming overall has trended up i mean it just keeps going up it doesn't stop people play video games all day we love video games I got gotcha. you. So, you know, just to, to, to step it back, you talk about like in the past bull run and of course the, uh, the uh, liquidity and where, where we've gone. I like to give this example with which is Alluvium. Now, I've had uh, uh, both, the, both of the Warwicks on and uh, the uh, co-founders of Alluvium. It looks like a great game. It's actually on, on Epic Games right now and uh, mm -hmm. people are downloading and playing it. But before the game even was out and they just had a structure, a skeleton structure, it was almost $1,800 per token. That was in the hype of the bull market. Now they actually have a game out that's functioning and working. And look at this, you are here. <laughs> it's, only, it's basically roughly around $100, which is pretty crazy. But then to talk about what you just said about the platforms, I see now why you have these up here at the top because these are studios. You got Playable, you got GameSwift, you got Nakamoto brands here. And then of course, uh, I don't know. I mean, Shrapnel is only at like a Shrapnel. 15, 20 million at this point. I got gotcha. you. And these are all studios with multiple, multiple games instead of just saying yeah. like Alluvium, which has three or four games. And you got Gala down here, which also went to, to, to mobile as well. And then Ronin with uh, their their pixels. And I think one of the, the big ones. Yeah. I can explain to you why I put Gala at 25X. Let's take a, well, it's pretty high as far as market cap, but uh, you know, yeah. roll it off. Let's hear it. Well, you know, if they go through with everything they say they're going to do, 25X is probably FUD. Like it, it's probably going to go 75X to 100X. But the problem is like, they made a lot of promises didn't go through with a lot of the quote unquote promises. They'll debate that all day. You know, I love Gala. I think they've got a ton of potential. I love the gaming arm so much more than everything else, but that spider makes a tanks. lot of sense. Spider I'm tanks. Crypto gaming, yeah. Spider tanks. I've played over 3000 matches of spider tanks. No one can compete that six time rank one player <laughs> on spider tanks. That game was a lot of fun to play at a, at a certain time. Nowadays, the economy is a little iffy. They're having drama with game media and stuff like that. So mm. unfortunate, right? Uh, but you know, like, if they go through with their vision, if 
crypto gaming is going to worth be worth hundred billion dollars by the end of this bull. Twenty five x, it's like at a six hundred million dollar market cap. Twelve billion, fifteen billion. Last bull cycle at top, they were at what five to ten billion or something like that. I wasn't even looking because back then I wasn't even in gala. But um, yeah, like it, it was it was pretty high valuation. I think they can definitely go much higher if they go through with going through with their games and also if they continue being trendy because being trendy in crypto gaming is important a lot right. more important than having a good product unfortunately yeah un yeah unfortunately that's really what it comes down to the memeology and, the memeology, and how much you can actually yeah. hype it up and that's that is the truth okay so asus fantastic information thank you so much uh, for those those pieces now i think i think this is this is the most interesting part that i i gleaned from one of your videos nodes and it was this scene right here. It was this spot in your video where you said, and this, there's a two different nodes, Playable and Miria, which uh, Miria is one of your, your big plays back in September when he came on the show. I spent way too much money on it. Yeah, well, it might actually. I, I actually think off. it's really good RI, but yeah. But look <laughs> at the this. time, it felt like it. Yeah, for these nodes, 1687 per day at the price of whatever this was five days ago. I don't know what it is actually now. It's higher now, yeah. And then, yeah, and then Playable was 10 bucks per day. And I'm like, and then these are the tokens that you got. You broke it down beautifully. And then, of course, you can get a node right now for $5,500. What was interesting is, is the break even, the ROI. You said it was 220, 223 days at the present price. If it stays the, at the present price, then Miria, yeah. the same thing, but 266 days moving forward. So talk to us real quick about the nodes and what your play is, because it sounds like you're, the tokens that you have, it looks like you're going to roll those into more nodes, and maybe you're going to go heavy nodes. I mean, I already own a lot of nodes. I like, I'm like mid five figures in nodes at this point. Probably a little, a little unhealthy, but um, yeah. So the <laughs> ROI, when you looked at it, that's different now. So Miria right now is making somewhere around nineteen dollars per day, broke a zero, um, and the price of it last time I checked was somewhere around forty five hundred days. So I think it's one hundred eighty days or something like that for ROI, which is absurd, by the way. That's, that's crazy. If you ever run a business, ago, that's crazy. That yeah. is absurd. A, m a month ago, it was five thousand days. For ROI. Oh, okay. But if you held the tokens the entire way down, you would have gotten significantly more ROI because of the fact that as people purchase more nodes, you actually get less coins because it's just one pool. So the more people that buy, the less coins that come back. And it's just this loop of people spending all their USDC and all their tokens to buy more of these nodes. The pot, the, it just pumps like crazy because they want to go ahead and be like little mini market makers and it keeps going uh, until the sunset goes ahead and, and suns okay so in terms of notes why they're so cool in my opinion is like you know you look at a node we look at a playable node and we look at the roi numbers in comparison to a lot of these different like lending protocols in a way yeah. in layer mm -hmm. ones the apr on these much more risky layer one protocols that will probably rug you it's kind of the same in a way Exactly. And the likelihood of a project that's already raised 50 to 100 million dollars is just much higher for that to actually stick around versus you going ahead and getting into these like lending protocols that will probably not exist next year. Yeah, I can see it. And I got to tell you, so I have actually joined you on Playable. I didn't pick up a Myriad node. I thought this was a pretty good one. I like uh, and I think they already have some personal playing. preference. Yeah, personal preference. I, I, I think you you're more into this one. But remember, I'm into both. yeah. Yeah, I've heard of, and remember this, and everybody who is listening at home, this is not financial advice. We can't tell you what to do. No, we're all DGENs. That's we're all we DGENs. <laughs> and, and like with this one, you can, I, I will guarantee there are other people in the chats right now that have done nodes in different crypto projects beforehand that said it was great in the beginning, but it didn't really pan out. So the question you have to ask yourself is how long do we really think that gaming is going to be here? Is it going to be the next narrative? And can it really evolve and be the, the big thing like we think it is? I think it can be. I think Asus is the same way. It's my job, right? I mean, I, I'm all in. I ditched my DeFi channel. It was much larger. I think this industry is going to be way bigger than a lot of these DeFi industries and trends. I think it's going to be bigger than even AI, which AI is going to be a big narrative in 2024. Financial markets, crypto, AI, I don't know if it makes too much sense. So I'm thinking gaming might be the more sensical thing. Obviously, the whole buying of assets, selling of assets, having some form of governance to establish what a game should be doing. It just makes more sense than AI. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure we're going to be the top trend. And that's why I invest in both, because I don't know. I don't either. <laughs> well, well, Jesus, you answered everything. I think that was a lot of information condensed in a very small amount of time. So, everybody, 
There's a link in the description for Jesus' channel, uh, also for uh, his uh, X account. You can follow him on there. And then, Jesus, we'll have to have you back as, uh, as things start to heat up because I think that the gaming market will heat up pretty fast. We'll be back Even soon. I mean, I'm sweating already, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're in Florida. That's how it is. All right, everybody. So, so Jesus, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Guys, if you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing, all that good stuff. And that is it for today. Thanks so much. And we'll see you on the next one. See y'all. All right. So yeah, thanks, Jesus. Again, a lot of information uh, condensed in, into a very small amount of time. And uh, it's just, it's it's good information. But remember, and I'm going to call on some of the community to, to, to speak out. When we talk about nodes, I know that there are people out there that have invested into nodes and it didn't really work out for them. I believe Mullet, we talked about this before. So if you want to chime in and talk about that, it is risky, but the rewards are great. Again, higher the risk, the higher the rewards. And then uh, just take a look at, uh, again, with, uh, with Playable and what Jesus was talking about, which made a lot of sense. If you invest into the individual games, it's a little bit risky because if the game sucks, then it's not going to go anywhere, right? Illuvium's got a pretty good thing going on. They have like three or now even four games uh, that are out and they're doing just fine. But uh, when he talks about the, the platform or the studios, this is why he thinks that uh, Playable could be a potential 75 to 100x because they got multiple games coming out. So if you don't like Dogs of War or, you know, people don't, it doesn't agree with them, but they've got War of Steel and the other ones, these, these card-based, turn-based games, great. And then Myria is uh, one of those, those groups that has like uh, some really high-level people from different industries like Ubisoft, Activision, Marvel, Epic Games, right? Goldman Sachs. So, you know, you, you got the whole... <laughs> The whole the whole gang there, the whole different uh, uh, skill that you need to run an actual studio. And they've got a, just a plethora of different games that are either coming out or out already. So I can see why they say a studio is uh, one of those ways to go. But again, very risky. And that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. I'm going to talk about is time sensitive. Things are going to move fast and they're going to even they're going to accelerate as we get into next year into the uh, Bitcoin halving. That's all we have for today. But if you got to take off, take off. Thanks for stopping by, all 800 or so of you. I appreciate it.